was the manager of the year in 2002, and I had a 13-year big league career, which is a lot more than any of us can say. So uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce Mike Sochi. Yeah, you haven't heard me say anything, so don't, don't get your hopes up. Yeah. But um, it's really, uh, it's great to be here. I'm originally from Philadelphia, so believe me, I can, uh, I love California. I've been out here a long time. In fact, I lived for 12 years right up in, in Claremont. So I've been, uh, I've been down here for a long time, and I know you guys understand the opportunity you have. And I don't want to get into a lot of deep stuff um, about how hard you have to practice and what you need to do, because I know you guys have heard that for a long time. The one thing that I always balance everything we do against and where we are and, and what we're what we're about is how am I going to feel 20 years from now? How am I going to feel 30 years from now about missed opportunities and things that maybe you didn't understand and, and, and didn't grasp? Everybody that's on this field right now has a special talent or you wouldn't be here. The coaches saw it. You have a great chance to come here and play a sport you love and get a, a, a world-class education. And I know if I say that again, you're probably going to throw up, but you guys are here for your education. We know that. Even even the guys that are going to go on and maybe get a chance to play pro ball, uh, you know, uh, uh, girls that might go along, get, get a chance to play in Olympic baseball, whatever whatever the path is going to lead you, you want that education. You want that basis that's going to make you a whole person. And then you're going to see uh, where uh, you're going to see where your life is going. It will go in in positive direction. Crack my brain. I'm 56 years old. I played baseball since I was 17, and all I'd ever done is think about, well, you have to win, you have to win, you have to win. I've come to the conclusion, I did it probably about 30 years ago when I was playing, you know what, the one thing in baseball you cannot control, you know what that is? A win. It's a team game. All we can do is to prepare ourselves, all we can do is play free, all we can do is to, to give our best effort, bring our talent on the field every time we're there. And if we do that, and the other, the other eight people on the field do that, you know what? You're going to play to your potential. And you know what might happen? You might win. But you cannot miss the steps that lead to that win. And what are, the, what are those steps? I mean, I'm not going to tell you guys anything different than I'm telling Mike Trout or Albert Pujols or guys that we, we play with in the major leagues. First, you, you need to practice the game hard. And anybody on this field right now that's not that doesn't practice the game hard or think it's BS, you guys are in for a rude awakening. You need to practice the game hard. You need to, to get that confidence in practice that's going to make you that championship player. So when we're going through a drill, I can guarantee you coach doesn't have any drill out there that's eyewash. If he does, we're going to have a conversation. We're going to clip this down a little bit because I guarantee you there's nothing you girls are doing on the field that's eyewash. Everything that you guys do are, are doing is for a purpose. It's to make you more proficient at doing something. And when you take that thousandth ground ball to shortstop and you field it and become second nature, you get into a game and now all you're doing is reacting. You're reacting to the situation. You're letting your athleticism play on the field. That's going to make you the best player you can be. So you need to practice this game hard. Second, you need to prepare yourself mentally and physically to play. And that's going to come in all different forms. I think as a young coach, you're going to learn this. I think as an old coach, Art Mazman, he's going to learn this too. It comes in all forms. And I've learned this. This is going to be my 16th year managing the Angels. And I've had some rude awakenings in the last five years where it's, it's 10 minutes before a game, and I'm going through. i got all my nose. We're ready to go. I'm seeing our shortstop laying back with his legs crossed, listening to, uh, you know, to his iPod. But you know what? That shortstop is the hardest player, and he's the best shortstop in the league, and that's the way he gets ready to play. He's not listening to anything. He's not calling anybody on the phone. He's going through the plays in his head. And if you talk to Eric Ibar, he'll sit there up until about 12 minutes before game time with his headphones in and his locker, and you ask him what he's doing, he's saying, Man, I'm just I'm I'm seeing Jeter hit the hit that sinker down and in. He's hitting into the sixth hole. And I'm ready for it. Almost like a race car driver that's going through every turn. You know they do before they get they prepare. This is how he gets ready to play. And at first you're sitting there going, Are you kidding me? We're out in the field. We got a packed house. We're playing a team that's we're neck and neck in our division. They're they're ready. They got the best pitcher pitching on the mound. And you're sitting here 12 minutes before with your iPod in. You know what? It works for him. 
That's how he gets ready. I told him the first day I see him without his iPod in, I'm going to have a problem because he's not getting ready to play the way he needs to. So this is what I mean about getting ready to play. Get ready to play a game, mentally and physically, whatever you need to do. And the last thing is probably the thing that I learned, uh, youngest lesson in life, and, and I'll explain a little more when I say play free. You guys might have conception, or, or, you know, a, a concept of what play free means. Very simply, play free means you have to visualize yourself in a positive situation every second on the field. You see that ground ball being hit to you before it's hit. You're in the batter's box. You see that pitch coming in. You see yourself hitting it. And you're always thinking positive on the field. Now, what happens when all of a sudden I'm, I'm going to field that ground ball and it comes and it takes a little hop and it bounces off my chest and goes into the outfield? I pick that ball up. I throw it to the mound. You know what you need to do? You need to turn that page and you need to rip that page out, crumple it up, and throw it in the, in the wastebasket. That plays over. That plays over. If I'm on the mound and I make a pitch and the guy gets a blue pick, next pitch I throw a nasty 3 2 slide around the black, he takes it for ball four. Now I got first and second, nobody out. And I'm out there thinking, my gosh, what, you know, you know, what, you know, what am I going to do? Well, you know what? It's no different than if you had hung two curveballs and guys go base hit, base hit. It's where you are now. You're first and second, nobody out. Deal with it. Pitch it. You just made an error in the field? Fine. Guys on first base. Let's deal with the situation at hand and play free. So that next ground ball that's hit to you, you might make another error or might take another bad hop, but it's, you're not going to miss that play because of the one you missed before. So this is what I mean by playing free. And we really stress that at our level because the, the, the margin of error at our level of winning and losing is incredible. You would not believe how good the worst team in the major league was last year. You watch them play, you watch them practice, you go, man, these guys can play. How are they 70 and 92? That's how fine the line is. So that's why it's really important that mental part of the game is to play free. Understand what wins and loses games. There are so many components that go into winning and losing games. Too many people focus on the batter's box as to, to how you hit that night or why didn't you score. There are so many things that go into winning and losing a game, and we need to be responsible for our little piece of the puzzle. So without trying to do too much, go out there and play your game. And I can throw all the cliches at you now that I've heard since I was 10 years old. Art's heard since the Civil War. <laughs> these, 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 these little cliches, these little cliches you hear are there for a reason. When we say, don't try to do too much. What's that mean? Like I was battling for a long time. What do you mean not trying to do too much? What's track supposed to play? Well, you know what? Baseball is probably the one game in the world where you trying to do too much impacts you um, more with more negativity than other any other any other sport in the world. Football. If I'm a lineman, I can try to do too much. I can sprint off the line hard, do whatever I need to do. Baseball is a game that's different from any other game in the in the in, in the world. Believe me. So when you guys have to make a big pitch or you're up at the plate, you've, you've got you've to you've execute a hit and run or whatever might be, uh, might be happening at the time, get a bunt down. You have to understand the simple concept of, of being preparing yourself, uh, playing free, visualizing success, and you will see how much mentally better you handle the game. There's one philosophy that we have. We never... Like I said, I've been doing this in the major league level for a long time. We never get upset with a player who makes an aggressive mistake. If you're a first base and you get thrown out of third base on a single, great. As long as you went through the steps. I know Art's going to start to yell at me here because he doesn't like to see guys get thrown out. But as long as you go through the steps, you made your good read, you were aggressive, and they got you by a foot of third base, fine. Don't worry about it. Play free. Next time you're there, if there's an adjustment you would need to make, maybe your secondary lead wasn't big enough, make it. And you know what? Play with that same free thought process to think about making plays and not worrying about mistakes. And I think that's the biggest thing that I can impress on you today is you can't control winning or losing. You can't. I don't think, I think if we could, I think someone's going to be really, really rich if you can a way to, 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 to find out and control a win or a loss. But what you can control is making sure the steps that you're responsible for along the way are in place. So simple things in this game 
that we can execute we need to do 10 out of 10 times. And you know, you can say you, you can't be perfect, but you know what? There are parts of this game we can't be perfect at. I think that's what you have to understand about how you're going to play free, work toward perfection. You might not get there, but I think with those expectations as a, as a player, I think you're going, to, you're going to go a lot farther and be able to handle things a lot better than you are any other way that I've found out. And like I said, I've been in the game as long as some guys. I've been playing it for a long time and managing for a long time. I think there are things that uh, that you can put into play that are going to make you a better player, and how that piece comes together, you'll eventually be a better team. Coach, that's all I got.